Have you ever found yourself stood on a platform and heard that your train is delayed or cancelled due to a fault with the signalling system? Well, in this video, I'm going to outline some of the most common faults that might have caused you to be on that platform, wondering when you're going to get moving. But first, what is the signalling system? The signalling system essentially controls the movements of trains around the network. Signals tell drivers when to stop and go, similar to traffic lights. Other systems tell the signallers where trains are on the network, how points are set, and if they are locked in place and safe for trains to travel over. An important philosophy behind signalling systems is that if they fail, they fail in a safe way. This is done by bringing all trains to a stop, which then leads to delays and cancellations for passengers, but they are safe while the problem is worked out. The signalling system goes into a failed state for a range of issues, from the seemingly small to issues covering large areas, but for all these issues, passenger safety is the first priority. So what are the common issues that cause the signalling system to fail? Let's take a look. First up, we have points failures. Points are the moving pieces of rail that allow trains to change tracks. Given their moving nature, they are susceptible to issues. Issues at points can also have a big impact as they can lock up a junction, preventing multiple trains moving. The common issues are obstructions, getting into the points, preventing them from moving all the way over. The obstruction can be a piece of ballast, a loose clip or bolt, or even snow. POE failure. The switch rails in the points are moved by point operating equipment, POE. There are a few different types, but like most electrical and mechanical equipment, they are not immune from issues. Connections working loose or hydraulic hoses splitting are common causes of failure. Loss of detection. It's important to ensure that switches are fully closed before allowing trains to pass over them, otherwise trains could derail. This is done through detection, which confirms that the points are fully set in either the normal or reverse direction. It also confirms with the signalling system that this is the correct direction for the signalled move. Unless detection is confirmed and correct, a green signal will not be shown. Loss of detection can be caused by a number of things. Failure of parts of the electrical circuit used for detection, or an obstruction stopping the switches moving over. Train detection. Train detection systems tell signallers and the signalling system overall where trains are. A main safety feature of signalling systems is that the track ahead has to be proved to be clear of other trains before a train can proceed. For this, the track is split up into sections in which only a single train can be at any time. There are two main systems used to tell if a train is in a section, track circuits or axle counters. As the name suggests, axle counters use treadles to count the number of axles in, then back out of a section to prove that there are no trains there. Track circuits are fundamentally electrical circuits, utilising the rails to link a power source at one end and a relay connected to the signal at the other. Each track circuit section is isolated by insulated block joints in the rails. When no train is in section, the current passes through the relay to complete the circuit. This then shows that the section is clear on both the signal and the signalling panel. However, when a train enters the section, the axle allows the current to bypass the relay to complete the circuit. When the relay isn't getting a supply of current, it then indicates that the track circuit is occupied and the signal is changed. Let's look at the common failure types on a track circuit first. Given the fact that a track circuit requires the flow of electricity to work properly, anything that affects this can cause a short. This in turn can cause the track circuit to show there is a train present when there isn't. This is known as showing occupied while clear. Common issues are debris causing a short circuit, wet ballast, whether from rain, the inside of a tunnel or from frost can also give a route for the electricity to shore. Closer inspection of railway components will show multiple instances where insulation is designed in. Pads, materials selected for the use of sleepers and ferrules are all examples of this, all to keep a track circuit from shorting out. A critical meeting point for track circuits is between the rail and the wheel. For the electrical current to pass between the two, the contact has to be good. Anything that gets between the rail and the wheel is known as railhead contamination. Rust on the rail from long periods of disuse or pulp created from fallen leaves are two common examples of contaminants on the railway that can cause issues with the passage of the current. This can cause a train not to be detected by the signalling system and therefore showing the track as clear. This is a very dangerous situation known as a wrong side failure as the system has not failed in a safe way. The last area we're going to look at is the insulated block joints we mentioned earlier. These joints have insulated T-pieces between the rail ends, 
along with other insulation, to separate the different track circuit sections from each other. However, they are not immune from issues. Swarf, created from maintenance works or the passage of trains, can get into the joint. If the joints are voiding or dips, the ends can become battered and lip over. Both of these allow the insulation to be bridged, allowing current to pass across. This could also occur if any of the other parts of the insulation are damaged. Expansion of the rails in summer, which compress the insulated T-piece, make this failure type more common, as the gap to be bridged is shorter. These failures can be prevented by applying coatings to the joints, and by inspections as part of hot weather preparation, where lipping can be cut back or the insulation replaced. Now let's look at common axle counter failures. The way axle counters function mean that issues are confined more to the location of the axle counter head attached to the rails. Unlike with track circuit, a coke can stuck under the rail in the middle of an axle counter section is not going to cause a failure. Component failure is very likely cause of an axle counter failure. As with all electrical systems, a single component, such as a card, that fails can take the whole system down. Next up is damage. Axle counters rely on the head to count the axles, as we've shown. For this to work properly, they need to be close to the axles and therefore are mounted on the web of the rail. This then exposes them. Items hanging from the bottom of trains, maintenance teams working near them, or even tampers can damage the heads. And this then means they need changing. Our last reason for failure is operational reasons. Given the way they work, anything that disrupts the overall count on the system can cause it to still show occupied. This could be a train stopping directly on top of the axle counter head, it can lead to the previous section still showing occupied as the axle has been missed as leaving the section. It can also be an issue if maintenance teams are using trolleys, but the access point is in the middle of an axle counter section. However, it is normal practice to confirm the line is clear and then reset the axle counter system at the end of all maintenance works. Power failures. The railway needs electricity. This is for moving trains, lighting signals and powering the signalling system and signal boxes. This power is transferred through cables, kilometres of cables. This power infrastructure, from the electrical grid to substations to cables, all present potential failure points. Any issues, from extreme weather, vandalism, to equipment simply breaking, can lead to a complete loss of the ability to move or signal trains. Depending on what has failed, the areas affected can be huge. It's also not uncommon for failures to also have fires, which then adds an extra layer to the repairs. Extreme weather. The railway as a whole is subjected to all weathers. Many components sit trackside, fully exposed. And while these components are designed to be outside, extreme weather can push them too far, especially as they age. Hot weather can lead to overheating and lineside fires. Wet weather brings flooding and lightning strikes, while the winter brings snow and sharp drops in temperatures. High winds also bring trees down onto the railway, damaging componentry as they go. Other factors to consider when it comes to extreme weather and trying to get the railway back running is that the issues can be widespread. The response team may get stuck in traffic due to a tree on the road or flooding. It also may not be safe for them to actually carry out rectification works. So now we've seen what some common fault types are. How are these faults rectified? Well, it would be impossible to create a video explaining how every single fault is fixed. It would be days long, but there is a standard approach. Once the fault has occurred, signalers and other staff within the signal box review data to determine which systems and which locations are affected. This narrows down the equipment that be could be the cause, as well as where it is. In some instances, systems may be able to be reset remotely. Teams are then sent to the area with as much information as possible to start looking for the fault, known as fault finding. This may take many forms. Equipment is tested and inspected. The track may be walked looking for obstructions or shorts. Depending on the nature of the fault, this can be as quick as checking there is nothing lodged in the points. Two teams in multiple locations carry out coordinated testing. In the meantime, signalers and control will have a look at ways to get trains moving, either through diversions, slowing them down or spacing them out further. The entire aim is to move trains, but without increasing the risk to passengers or the teams on the ground. This is generally known as degraded working. Once the root cause of the issue is identified, then repairs or rectification works are undertaken. This can be as simple, as we said, as removing an obstruction, to changing components, 
right up to running out hundreds of metres of new cables. It may be done straight away, or a temporary fix may be done with a plan to come back during the night to complete the full fix. Then it's time to start running trains again and recovering the service back to normal. I hope this has given you a bit more of an idea of what might have happened when you're sitting on that platform, seeing the signalling fault on the notice board and waiting for the train. I'd also ask you just to remember the men and women who are at that moment working hard to try and get your train moving. They're likely under a lot of pressure. I hope you found this video useful. If you want to know more about railway engineering, a great place to start is with our Track Components Guide ebook that's available at the link in the description. If you want a little added extra, by signing up to our email list at the link below, you'll get our free Guide to Can ebook straight into your email inbox. Do you drop any comments or queries below? Hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss a single video. Thank you.